Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, Rangers Review special. I'm delighted to say we're joined uh, by Dapo Mabudi to have a wee chat about his uh, time at Rangers and how he's getting on down south as well at Watford. Dapo, thanks very much for uh, having a little chat with us. No problem. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Um, we're just talking off air there, Dapo. Um, of course, you're in the, the midst of pre-season, gearing up for the, the new season. How, how has pre-season been for you with Watford this year? Um, pre-season been good. It's been tough, obviously. Uh, all our pre is always quite hard, but um, it's been quite enjoyable. We had to have a new manager, a new staff. Yeah. And obviously, this is only my second pre-season here, so yeah, it's been good. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. And of course, you spent last season on loan at, at AFC Wimbledon. How, how was that for you in terms of a, a learning experience? Um, it was decent um, for our first full season. Like, yeah. In regular games, it was good. Uh, started off really well. Then um, it was a bit of like a up and down season, but I feel like I learned a lot and matured a lot from it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. League League One's quite a, a demanding league, isn't it? Lots of good teams in that in that league last last season. So uh, you must have uh, felt like you developed a lot as a player. And I mean, what, what's what's the plans for? The, the new season, are you hoping to get an opportunity at Watford, or uh, do you know if you're going to be sent out on loan again? Um, to be honest, I just take everything day by day and just try and do my best. And I leave them decisions in the hands of the club, but um, I'm just trying my hardest every day to impress and keep them and keep doing well. And I'll see where that takes me. Yeah, spot on, excellent stuff. Um, but let's talk Rangers then, Dapo. Um, the Rangers fans, of course, uh, interested in how, you, how you're getting on and, and obviously had uh, fond memories uh, of you breaking through. Uh, the academy gradually working your way up. You spent a, a great uh, period of time at, at the club. Um, you joined as a young boy, didn't you? How 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 did that come about? Did scouts go and have a, a wee look at you? Um, no, so that was when I was like ten years old. I went to you know like the soccer schools and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, there was one just outside the Ibrox, and I went there. And I done quite well, and then they told me to come to the training ground and train. With the uh, with my age at the time, which would have been like under 11, and I just stayed. I done well, and then I got signed like three months in, and then obviously I was there from 11 till just before I turned 20. So it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, did you have any role models growing up? Any any players you wanted to to be like? Um, no, I liked a lot of players. Like I've got. A lot of players that I like, but I didn't really have a, any particular that I wanted to be like. Just like enjoyed playing the game and watching good players as well. Yeah, and I mean joining Rangers. Then what, what was that like for you as a, as a young boy? You must have I mean what age must you have been then? Eleven or something like that when when you first joined? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was like just about to turn eleven, so I was like ten years old. But yeah, I, I, I suppose like at the time you don't really realise, and obviously I was a young boy coming from from London, so. I didn't. I knew Rangers were a big club, but I didn't understand how big it was until further down the line. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you you mentioned there, um, obviously moving from from London. How did you find? Was it Glasgow you lived in when you came up? Yeah, I lived in Glasgow. Um, it was good. It was cold, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the people were nice. So the people were nice there. So I didn't find it too hard settling in. And also, I was young, so I kind of matured into like myself in Scotland. So. Yeah. That's where it's kind of home. My family still live there, so yeah. And how, how did you find? I mean, obviously, you, you worked your way through and you made your, your first team debut uh, for Rangers. But in terms of the academy and all that, Dapo, how, was it quite demanding and all that sort of stuff, making your way through it? Yeah, no, the academy was um, it was good. So when I first came, obviously, I was quite quiet and. Obviously, I was in a new place, so I was just doing my own thing and trying to do well and work hard. But then as I got to like maybe under 14s, 15s, I started to develop a lot faster than some of my teammates. And I realized like how good I was at the time. So after that, um, it was a bit difficult because I started training with boys older than me, like the older age groups. And I was exposed to full time training quite early. So I was doing a lot of like gym work and a lot of running sessions that were a lot harder than my usual training, so I'd say it was quite hard, yeah. Yeah. Was there any boys that sort of came through alongside you and, and made it all the way um, 
any young lads that like you, Dapple, that, that made it towards it the first team? Um, so from my age group, when we was when we was young, from under the like from under ten, my first day, Nathan Patterson was there, and um, yeah. Billy Gilmore was there as well. I'm trying to think. so, yeah, we were the three from my age group that uh, I think we all played at Rangers. Obviously, Billy left quite yeah quite early, but um, Nathan went on to play a couple of times as well, and then got his move to Everton. So, yeah. How how good were those two playing with them, Dapo, and the team? Was it, could you tell that we were special players? Yeah, um, Nathan was always really good um, yeah. at young ages. Then he then he grew and got a lot bigger and f- filled in his body. Then yeah. he went to another level as well. And then Billy as well was always good from a young age, always giving me good assists. So yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and see, see when you started training with the first team, Dapo, how how old were you? And, and can you remember? The first time when you sort of get brought over to train with the first team? Uh, I think my first time training, I think I was 15 and it was quite uh, like a, I wasn't like a lucky one, obviously, because I was just getting ready for training with the reserves, I think. And then a player must have got injured and then he told me they needed me to come round. And I remember, obviously, because at that age, I knew I was getting close to, not to the first team, but I knew I was getting. I was training with the reserves and it wasn't as hard as it was at the start. So yeah. I thought that was always the next step for me. And then, so I always remember that because, sorry, I'm just fixing these there. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's but, no worries. Um, I'll always remember that because there was a lot of good players in the first team at the point and I was quite young. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, was it, did you notice a, a step up? Did it take you, I mean, it must have been quite daunting being, like you say, 15 going over there is, is, is crazy and playing with all these, uh, uh, professionals, all these experienced pros. Yeah, it was quite difficult. At the time when I went round, I think um, Nico Cranchal was a uh, Bruno Alves was a uh, Ken wow. Miller. So, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all of these players were there, and um, okay, yeah, I think that's better. And um, yeah, as a young boy, like, you watch all these players on TV and stuff like that. So, yeah. Seeing them in person it was a bit daunting at that age. But um, I thought it was so, my first session was so difficult. But then after that, I didn't train, I think, for another couple of months. And then when I came back round, I realized the difference in myself because I'd matured a lot as well. But the first time, I thought it was so difficult. <laughs> who, who, was it, who would be the manager? That, was, was it Pedro that, that was the manager at the time? Was it Graham Murtiv? Uh, it was Mertz. Graham Murtiv yeah. took over for, for a while. So he obviously knew me, so he like, took me around. Yeah, that's class. How, how how sort of beneficial do you think he was, Dapo, in terms of your uh, progression? Uh, he was good to me. I think uh, at that age, when he came into the club, he was good with the reserves. He went into like a lot of detail about things and also he like challenged me. So even if I was doing well, like he wouldn't always tell me I'm doing well and it'd yeah. maybe, maybe work harder. But um, he was good to my development as well. Yeah, fantastic. And even like through the academy, you you were the captain and all that uh, for the team at some points. Was that something you realised and you enjoyed? Uh, yeah, like, I think <laughs> I captained the uh, under 18s, but then I moved out the under 18s to the reserves, so I didn't get to do it for the whole season. But then I captained in the UEFA Youth League as well, and I thought uh, yeah. that was quite quite a good moment at the time because obviously it's like the Youth Champions League against that like, good teams. And just to be the captain and wear the uh, UCL captain's arm it was obviously good, yeah. Yeah, but when Stephen Gerrard arrived, Dapo, I seen a wee video on the Watford website saying you were you were starstruck. So the first day you sort of seen him walk in, what what was that like seeing a guy like that taking over? And did the boys in the dressing room know that it was happening? What, what was that like at that time? Uh, it was it was good. So when when the gaffer got the job, I was still still sixteen, so. I obviously saw like the videos of him arriving at Ibrox and growing up a Liverpool fan, like he was always like one of my idols. So I thought like this is crazy, it's gonna be the manager. But I was still at the at the point where like I was still at the point where I was in the reserves, but I didn't know if it was too early for me to break into the first team or whatever. So I kind of looked at it not as a fan, but like I just looked at it like, Oh my god, he's at the club but yeah. I didn't think he would actually be like my, my manager but everyone I think everyone was the same as that everyone couldn't believe like he was there and then obviously when he came in like his aura was just 
crazy. I remember I saw him in an uh, indoor hall, I think. It was my first time I saw him. And everyone was just like looking back saying, like, wow. But then, um, yeah, he was really, he was actually the, probably the biggest part of my career so far, yeah. to be fair. So, yeah. Yeah. What was it like as a coach in Dapo in terms of, like you say, it, it helped your, your career? I mean, being, being coached by him, what, what can you sort of put in your words what, what it was like for you? Um, yeah, no, it was it was really good, and obviously his staff, uh, Mick Bill, was yeah a really good coach. He helped me come on um, leaps and bounds as well. Gary McAllister, Tom Coulshaw, but um, no, nah, just being with them was it was good because I think they looked after me quite a lot because I was still seventeen at the time when I was training with the first team, like on a regular basis at this point. And um, obviously, when I even look back at that, I still I was a baby back then, so. Yeah. They were uh, they were looking after me quite well, so and just letting me enjoy my training, so it was good. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And was there any players that, that sort of you piled about with that, that, that sort of <coughs> helped you settle in all that videos and, and, and you sort of uh, you were close to? Um I'm trying to think if anyone obviously at the start like Stephen Davis and um and Scott yeah. Arthur, they talked to the young boys, but they weren't obviously like I weren't close to them, but they would always like, help me on the pitch and like holiday. But uh, I was so young, I was just like just training, getting doing my stuff on the pitch, and then I'd come in and just do my gym work and just go home. Like I wouldn't really like huh. like speak that too much, but um, everyone was good with me to have. Everyone was good, but uh, then when JD came in, when yeah. he came in, he was good with me, and then I got quite close with. Um, Ariba, Kamara, Bassi when he was there, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, JD, like you mentioned, I guess another legend, Dapo, he's, he walks in the door and I mean, some of the goals he scored was unreal for Rangers as well. I guess you can't help but learn off a guy like that. It must have been brilliant for you just uh, coming, just starting your career to learn off a guy like that, an absolute legend. Yeah, well, when he came in, uh, I was meant to be going to Tenerife from the first team in the January when he signed, but then he signed and then they didn't need me because he was a striker, obviously. So, so at the start, I thought like when he came in, I was like, oh, I might not get a chance with the first team this season no more. But then um, I started, I started training again. I think it was just because I had too much numbers in Spain, and yeah. then when they came back, I started training and straight away, like he just like took me under his wing and just started helping me out. And I think I I trained well because I was trying to maybe even impress people like him as well but like yeah he helped me quite a lot and he still speaks to me till today telling me what i can do better and like that's what he's always been up with me yeah class yeah he's he's, he's absolutely sensational and alfredo dapple what, what was he like uh, when he came on and for your debut you played alongside him for a little bit but um what, what was he like to train with and, and be around uh he was obviously he was a good player you can obviously tell him like, a great player but um uh, he was just funny. Like you just, <laughs> ne you just never know what he could like he can do. And obviously at the time, he did, like he's got English better now. But at the time, I used to think like I don't even know if he understands what the coaches are saying. Like he just like gets in a bit and just. <laughs> but nah, he was he was a good laugh. He was a good laugh. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, I mean, I think he's a, he's a club's top European goal scorer and all that. Now he, he loves playing in, in, in Europe, doesn't he? And, and some of the goals he scores are, are outstanding. But um, yeah, he's a right character. Your debut then? I mean, did you know that you were going to play in that game against Kilmarnock? Did did you have a uh, did the manager tell you that you were going to feature, or did it come as a bit of a surprise? Um, no, the manager told me that I was going to make my debut. I think. The, I think it was the week or week and a half before. So um, I was training well and I was on the brink of it. I was on the bench a couple of times. I was in some squads, like quite a yeah. lot. But I couldn't just make my debut. And then uh, the gaffer told me after. We had a game against Liverpool, like a behind closed doors game. And yeah. um, I scored two goals in that game. And then the gaffer told me the next morning, like, if you continue doing the training and playing the way you are at the moment, You'll make a debut next weekend against Kilmarnock. Then we had the under 18 Youth Cup final, I think three days later. Beat Celtic, I scored in that. And then um, the gaffer just pulled me the next morning after the, that game and said, You're going to make your debut this weekend against Kilmarnock. Like, tell your family and tell your, like, whoever to come up and you're going to make your debut and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was good. 
Yeah, class. And can you remember much about it coming on and on that, and all that sort of stuff? Because is it a, a sort of a memory that you, you cherish? Um, yeah, I remember everything about it. To be fair, because I was like, I waited like so long for it because I thought I was going to get it like so many times that season. But then, uh, no, it was good because my mum and dad was uh, my next door neighbour was there because he's a season ticket holder. My agent came up from like everyone was there. And it was a big deal because it was like when you sign like professionally at like 16, 17, whatever, yeah. like you're a professional footballer, but you're not actually a professional, if you get what I mean, because you've not yeah. done anything yet. So to um, obviously make my first game, and it was like, I think like 17 and it was, it was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I bet it was absolutely fantastic. And I, I mean, uh, you were, went out on loan, of course, to Queen of the South after and things like that. Were you uh, a bit frustrated? I mean, not. I mean, it's great to make your debut at such a young age, Dapple, but were you hoping to maybe kick on after that? Yeah, I think I look back at the, at the end of my time at Rangers and it was a bit unfortunate because it was like, after I made my debut, that was obviously the last game of the season. So yeah. I came back in pre-season, done well. And then we had a Europa League qualifier and the gaffer told me I was going to play in that game. And um, three days before I had a reserve team game and I got injured. So I, mi I missed that game and I think in my head sometimes if I played that game, then it could have been different because it was, I think the first leg was like 6-0 against St. Joseph's. So I was thinking in my head, if yeah. I play in this match, I'll probably get a goal. And if I scored, then I would get, get a few more opportunities. But then I missed that for injury and then I kept training with him throughout that season had the youth league obviously at the start and then I went to Dubai in January for the training camp done well again and in the game against Strindra which was the cup game that's the one that Nathan made his debut after Dubai yeah. I was going to be involved in that game but then I got glandular fever in Dubai so on the last like on the, I think the third or fourth day in Dubai I tried like just trading for it because I really wanted to like make another appearance and like I was thinking like this can be the start of my like for me to kick on so I trained on one of the days and like I just I couldn't even speak because like my throat was all like messed yeah. up from glandular fever but I was thinking in my head there's two more days left here let me just get through it but then I just got so sick I couldn't move so I missed another game through injury and then yeah I think at key uh, illness I meant so I think at key moments of the after my debut I think um I think I had, it was a bit unfortunate so I think, yeah, I look back sometimes, I think if that had went different, maybe I would be in a different position and maybe I would have been there. But like, I look back at my time there really well because, and I left on my own terms, which is yeah, like, I, like I would have been more angry at myself if I had maybe got released. But obviously when, before I left, I got the three year deal, but I just thought at the time, yeah, it was time for me to, maybe move on so yeah i do look back and think it's unfortunate because there were so many chances that like here and there that maybe it's through injury or illness that um it went a different way but everything happens for a reason so i am where i am now so yeah yeah and you're damn right and obviously it's all about learning as, as young boys as well and i mean when COVID happened as well well dealt with that the, the lockdown incident did that is that something you sort of learn from as well and I guess it's just part of growing up as a, as a footballer and as, as a person as well yeah 100 percent. I think um I think at that time obviously I was we were still young and um just like yeah there's something there's certain things that you can't do and you can do it and um yeah and there's a time there's a time and place for things and just being young and naive you just get you do the wrong things and think maybe oh you can do something but yeah, 100%. I've learned from that and yeah, just helped shape me to the person I am now. So, yeah. Yeah, but see that see that decision you made, like you said, that was a mature decision to move away and down south to Watford. Um, did that take you a while to, to have a think about that one and think this is probably best for my career? And, and did, it's, it's often when you speak to players that, that leave Rangers, they're always sad to leave, but it seems like a mature decision from you to think that your career path uh, should be a bit different um i think from from a young age i've always had that like, i always set myself targets or something one of the main things was i always wanted to maybe come to england when i was because obviously i'm from england uh, i was born in england so i always wanted to kind of come back um, by by a certain age 
and I envisioned myself maybe playing for Rangers after making my debut, playing for a couple of seasons and then moving. But then um, after the stuff like missing my chances like through illness and stuff, and also because there was such a high demand on stopping 55, which I completely understand. I sometimes think as well, if I was growing up in a maybe five years before where it wasn't so so much pressure on stopping Celtic, then I would have got a few chances. But I kind of looked at it and thought, for the best of my own, because it was like, we were playing like some games like East Fife in the Scottish Cup and there would be like no rotation because everything would have to be a win. So um, I was kind of looking at it at the time and looking, yeah, I wanted to be at Rangers, but also for my own career um, and for what I set myself, yeah, I thought it was the right time to leave. So I, I was, yeah, I was definitely sad to leave the club because Rangers has a massive part of my career. Like I love the club, and that's yeah. where it's home for me. But you can't, I can't, I can't um, stand still. I think and 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 wait about. Like maybe one day I'll end up back at the club, and that would, that would be good. But um, I can't, I can't. I I didn't want to just do that. I wanted to do things on my own terms. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And did you keep an eye on the results? What did you make of the run to the Europa League final last season? Um, I literally watched every. I watched every single game of the Europa League. Uh, yeah. It was amazing. Um, I watch all the obviously the league games and stuff, and I always want them to do well because a lot of the people I still keep in contact with. So yeah, but um, it was unfortunate that they got beat in the final. Um, yeah. uh, this is another thing. Like it's just like little moments, like when Ryan Kent had the opportunity in extra yeah. time. Like it's just like football just wins in different ways, and you can you can never. You can never be too hard on yourself as stuff like that. But I think yeah. um, everything happens for a reason, as I said earlier. So the club are in a good position right now, and hopefully they win the league this season. So yeah, yeah. Do you think? Do you think they will? They've got a good shout. I know they've done a bit of business, brought a few good players in. But uh, do you think they can? They can win it back this season. Um, we'll see what happens. They they they've got a strong squad, and they're expected to win every every game. So um, yeah. We'll see what happens, but I'll definitely be watching them as a supporter um, all the time. Yeah, then I just finally wanted to touch on that. You mentioned uh, Calvin and, and Nathan earlier, uh, Dapo. Can you quite believe it? I mean, they've obviously left. Uh, Nathan went to Everton and, and Calvin's just signed for, for Ajax. Can you quite believe that you're playing with these boys and they're, and they're now playing for these sort of, these sort of clubs for multi-million pound deals? Uh, I can I can believe it, yeah, because um, I always had like a belief in my my friends and my teammates as well. Like when when I watch them on the training pitch and I play with them, I think like yeah, like maybe they've not had the opportunity at that moment before, but like I knew when they got the opportunity that um, that they would take it and do really well. And there's a couple other people that um, I like that that I've trained with and played with. But I'm still waiting for the opportunity. So I, yeah, I, I, can, I can believe that they're doing well. And I'm, Proud of them, they're doing really well. And I hope they kick on to the next level as well. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we'll keep an eye on yourself as well, Dapo. Hopefully, you have a, a good season uh, with Watford or uh, whoever uh, it may be uh, on loan, perhaps. But um, yeah, it's been great speaking to you. Thanks very much for having a chat.